everybody it is live at five welcome i am chris Wataco, your host and teacher and i'm so glad that you're joining us tonight i don't know where you are but it is beautiful weather where i am i'm in hendersonville north carolina in the mountains a little windy but i just think it's awesome i love uh this time of year of course you know i really do like every season i like change and uh, as much as I love winter, I love it to be cold. You can wear sweaters. And um, I also love the spring where you see everything. All the trees are blossoming. And of course, some of you with hay fever, you're not, this is not a good time of year, right? So give me a shout out. Let me know where you guys are, are watching from. And I uh, would love to see if everybody is uh, online and uh, welcome those that this is your first time. Hi, Sherry. This is your first time joining us, and you may be watching this at a later, uh, where it's uh, on one of the other web pages or Facebook pages. You may not be watching it live, and that's okay too. Please share this. If you would do me a favor and share this right when you watch it and let other people know about it, because we really need to help continue to spread the word of God. Hi, Pamela. Great to have you on tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. So let me ask you a question. Um, have you ever had one of those days... Uh, one of those weeks where everything seems to go wrong, like every day something seems to go wrong. I don't know about you. I, I've had one of those. Literally, this is in the last few days. I'm just going to go down a few things that have happened to me, and maybe you could put in the chat if you, you can relate to this, okay? Um, I went to open up my freezer door and noticed that half of the food was thawed out, and immediately I'm like, great, you know, the freezer's broken, um, then the internet went down and, and again, you know, and it wouldn't be such a big deal, but the whole month of January and part of February, I had no internet to the point where I had to change services. And they kept saying, we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. And immediately when it went out with this new company, that was the first thought that I had. Oh no, here we go again. Right. Um, I plant, I had a plant, an aloe vera plant. Somehow I killed it. I don't know how I killed it, but I overwatered it. Uh, but I went to touch it and it just went, Pleh. It just fell over. I'm pretty sure it's dead, you know. Um, I had to return some clothes to the store, and I, I, I thought I picked up the bag, and I got all the way to the store, and I realized that I forgot to bring the bag of the return clothes. So I had to turn around and go back and get the clothes. Um, how about this? You ever get stains on your clothes? Oh, my goodness. I just, I think I need to find a company or, or create a company that has uh, bibs for adults. I don't know, though, how bad that would look when you're out and about. But every single time, it seems like I spill something on myself. And so, again, this is just in the last few days, guys. Um, I accidentally splattered grape juice on my monitor of my computer and just freaked out. and went, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my gosh. Um, I got my Verizon bill and it was too high. They were supposed to deduct some money off. And of course, that means I got to call Verizon to sort that out again. Um, I put some socks on this morning and they were too small. Now what happened? I guess the dryer shrunk them. You know, my feet haven't really changed size, but the, the socks changed size. Um, I went to eat an avocado for breakfast and it was overripe and I had to throw it away. I went to the UPS to pick up something they said had come in and I got there and they didn't have any record that I had given them that they had a package for me. Um, I dropped my thermos. I had this great thermos, coffee thermos, and I dropped it so many times I brought, broke the handle off. Um, I went to my doctor. I had a doctor's appointment, and I went all the way to Raleigh, and I got into the appointment, and the doctor said, or the, the, the lady at the, re, the front counter said, we don't have you even listed as getting an appointment. But praise God, because I'd driven four hours, they were willing to fit me in. And then I went to a restaurant with my mom, this restaurant she wanted to go to, and we get to the restaurant, there was nothing on the website, we got there and it said, I'm sorry, we only take reservations. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID, they're shorthanded. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, what do you want to do? We're, we're a pretty good distance from the house, what do you want to do? And so I went in and I just said, hey, I didn't know, I'm not from here, I'm not familiar with your restaurant, it wasn't on the website. Do you think you could fit us in? And they first said no, and then they finally were like, well, okay. And they let us come and have dinner. Wow. And of course, as some of you know, I ordered soup with no onions. And what came? Soup with onions. Isn't that crazy, guys? Hey, Bob. Hey, Roseanne. Isn't that crazy? 
It's like nuts. Like, how can this all this stuff happen? And I'm going to tell you, there had been a time in my life that I would have had a super meltdown. There had been a time in my life that any of those things would have got me angry. But the reality is, when they all happen together, when they all happen in a short amount of time, you do get press, press, press. You do get, you know, it, it does begin to wear on you. And so I thought about there's some people in the Bible that probably also went through some things and easily complained about these things. And so I wanted to mention a few to you, see if you can relate. And if, if one of these people you relate to, uh, put it in the chat. And also, if somebody would put these scriptures in for me, that would be great, too. Uh, hey, Mary Lois, great to have you joining us tonight. The first one is Elijah. This is 1 Kings 19, 3 through 5. Some of you know Elijah is a prophet by God, and he has been asked and led by God to do all these great things. And, well, he started to get a little worn out, a little tired, and he heard about this lady Jezebel who was after him to kill him. And Elijah became afraid, yet God had done these powerful things in his life, just like you and me, right? Put some things in the chat that God has done for you. Some powerful things. He's cured you. He's helped you. He's guided you. He's encouraged you. He's provided for you. But you get worn out. You get tired. You get irritable. All these things can happen at you at one time. And then you complain. Elijah, this is verse 3, Elijah was afraid when he got her message. This is Jezebel's message. And he ran to the town of Beersheba in Judah. He left his servant there. Then he walked another whole day in the desert. And I can just imagine, right? Right? We've been there, done that, got the hat, the t-shirt, and the backpack, right? Finally, he came to a large bush, and he sat down in its shade. He begged the Lord, I have had enough. Now, understand, that's my version, but I can just imagine how he feels. I've had enough. Just let me die. I'm no better off than my ancestors. Then he lay down in the shade and fell asleep. Isn't that like all of us? God has done miracles. God has proven. He showed up over and over and over. But when you get worn down, you get exhausted. You're vulnerable. He was vulnerable. And then all of a sudden, this person who has no power over him, has no authority over him, he became fearful, just like us in our lives. You know, when you're a follower of Jesus Christ, he has the power in your life, but we so easily get pulled in and fearful of the power of the enemy. Here's another group of people, the Israelites. They complained about everything. What was wrong with those people? I mean, you know, why would they complain? So, mm, mm, probably like you and me, huh? Mm. They, they, were, they hated their lives as slaves. They didn't want to be under Pharaoh. They didn't want to be in Egypt. They wanted freedom, but yet they got it. They complained because it wasn't the way they wanted. They asked for God to provide or they asked for God to help them. And when God helped them, they didn't like exactly the way he helped them. And they complained and like to the point to where they'd rather stay in slavery. And I think to myself, Oh my goodness, you would rather follow the enemy, you would rather be without God so you can have what you perceive as a great life than to be with the Lord and knowing that he's going to take care of you. Now understand, when we choose to follow God, it's going to be his purpose and his way of life. And they may not include all the things that we want, or it may not include marriage, it may not include a great marriage, it may not include a great house. But when you have the Lord in your life, those things become less and less important, which equates to less and less complaining. This is Exodus 16, 1 through 4. They complained about Moses. They complained about his leadership. They complained about God's direction. They complained about the work, their food, the water, traveling. Oh, my goodness. It says in verse 6, it says, The whole Israelite community set out for Elam. And came to the desert of Sin, which I think is kind of funny, the desert of Sin, mm -hmm. which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. Now, we're talking about six weeks. They've been gone. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. Then we sat around pot, there, we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Wow. You know, I think that often when we're not obedient, 
when we're truly not doing what God has asked us to do is when everything becomes a complaint. You know, we complain towards God, we complain towards others, but the reality is we all we have is we to blame. We're the problem, we're the issue. When you ask God to help you, when you ask him to guide you, when you ask him for his provision, it may come in a way that maybe you wouldn't necessarily pick, but that's God. And if you get it, then it's, it's what he's doing in your life. It's what he's trying to show you and change you. He's trying to knock you off of you and get more of him in you. And so what he does is he allows things to happen in our life to get us centered and focused on him. And that's what he was doing with the Israelites. But they didn't thank God. They weren't appreciative of God. They're not appreciative of Moses. That Moses took a risk to come back to Egypt. You know, remember why he left Egypt. Remember what he did? He murdered someone. And he ran away. And he, when God talked to him, he's like, uh, not me. I can't speak. I'm not, I, I can't do these things that you're asking me to do. What a risk Moses took coming back. And instead of being appreciative of the risk he takes, he complained. We do that with our pastors, don't we? Churches, friends, leaders, our bosses. We complain about them instead of looking at them the way God looks at them, instead of praying for our pastors and our leaders, praying for those people that have risked their life, that have sold uh, everything they have in order to be able to serve God, our missionaries. We complain about everything. We are so focused on ourselves and what we want to be comfortable. Moses didn't deserve their complaints, but yet they did. Then you got the Pharisees, right, Sherry, right, Bob? You got the Pharisees, and they complained about Jesus. This is Luke 5.30. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Wow. All they wanted to do was find him out. They wanted to, to figure out a way to catch him saying something he shouldn't say. Or, you know, th their goal was to do that. And so they complained and whined in order to attack him. They, it's, there's a device of this, there, device system that, I can't say, they're trying to divide him, you know. There is this, this uh, mindset to destroy. The enemy is influencing them. And I think the same thing. It's like, you know, we complain about things around us. And we're really, um, you know, what, are we, what is our goal in accomplishing? Now, understand, I'll tell you something funny. My brother, Stephen, years ago would say, don't go out to dinner with Christine because she complains about everything. And the issue was uh, my food would have onions in it when I asked them for no onions or the potato was missing or, the, you know, the water wasn't cold. And these were legit complaints. These weren't like me making up stuff. But to my brother, it really bothered him. And he felt like it drew attention to us. And then he was afraid they might put something in the water, you know. But it took me, and I'm not joking, guys. It took me over 20 years to realize that the reason my food came back not great was because God wanted me to start a conversation with my server. So what perceived as complaints were really legitimate concerns. So please don't get me wrong. Sometimes we do need to complain. We need to go to, you know, to call that number or make a comment on something you purchased online and say this didn't work out or this was wrong or that person did this. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the whiny complaining about your lack of comfort. You didn't get to go here. Didn't get to do this. You didn't get the, the situation where you want. You didn't get the house you want. That's the complaining I'm talking about. That's the stuff. And these little things that happen in our lives, the freezer, by the way, was okay. The internet came right back on. These little things, realizing that everything we own eventually will break. Everything we own. So, and that was my thought, right? When I saw the freezer wasn't working, I thought, well, you know, everything breaks. It's okay. God owns everything. But you could easily have taken that and made a big deal out of it and have a meltdown and got angry at God because you knew you were going to have to spend some money. So here's some more here. Oh, I guess I didn't read the scripture, Luke 530, or did I? Yes, I see. Yes, I did read it. Then the next one is the Jews. The Jews complained. John 6, 41 says, And at this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, Jesus, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Everybody's complaining. Do you know that there are hundreds of references in the Bible about people complaining? Everything from, you know, I didn't know this was the way it was going to be. I, you know, I don't like where I'm living. I don't like what you've given me. I don't like where you're sending me. A lot of prophets complaining about where God sent them. 
You know, I thought I'd be better by now. I thought you'd heal me by now. You know, why can't I go here? When you told me I was healed, why can't I go here? Why do you want me to stay here? Over and over and over, people complain. So, are you a complainer? Do you find yourself complaining about things? What do you complain about today? Put in the chat. What do you find yourself complaining about today? Is it the cost of gas? Is it, you know, lack of service in restaurants? Is it that God hasn't healed you in the way you want him to heal you? I mean, that'd be a legit complaint to me. Is it that you thought you'd be married by now and you're not? Or maybe you are watching this and you're married and you thought it was going to be like a Hallmark movie and instead you look over and go, yeah, that's what I married. Woohoo, right? Or maybe you were hoping your kids would turn out differently or they would all get saved and they would know the Lord, but yet they're going on their own paths. And, you know, that sounds like a legit complaint. Hmm. Why do you think we complain so much? I asked Pastor Freddie not too long ago, Pastor Freddie and I co-lead the Labor Day Singles.org retreat, and we want you to come to this retreat. Pastor Freddie and I are the main teachers this year. We have a guest speaker, Pastor Dan Houck, with Intentional Relationship Solutions, and he is going to be our third speaker this year. But I asked Pastor Freddie, um, I asked Pastor Freddie, you know, why do people complain so much? And I said, I have somebody in my life uh, that I'm close to, um, anyway, that complains about a lot of things. And I said, they can, especially about people in her life. And I said, you know, what can I do to get her to stop? Because she'll say, it's venting. I need to vent. And, and understand there are times we need to vent. And I've talked about this on Live at Five in the past. That there are legitimate times that we need to find people we trust to say, I'm struggling with this. I need to just vent because I'm angry at my boss. I'm angry at my husband. I'm angry at my friend. I'm angry at my girlfriend. Whatever. Okay, I get it. And then there are times that we vent because we, we need a solution. We need guidance and direction. And then everything else is called complaining. So I said, how do I get her to stop complaining? And he says, well, I want you to listen to her, okay? Be supportive, okay? And then say, you know what? Let's pray for that person. How about that? Let's pray. And so I said, okay, that sounds good. And so I, I, I was excited for my next opportunity, which wasn't very long. And right in the middle, I was like, you know, I, I, I really, I'm so sorry that you're really struggling with that person and it really bothers you. And they're like, uh, okay, I said, let's pray for them. So we prayed and, and then she went right back to complaining. Uh, it didn't completely work, but if you do it enough, hopefully it will. But that's because of where she is in her life. That's what's going on in her life. And so I was trying to figure out, so why do we complain? What did you put in there? Terry said, hey, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Terry. Rosanna says, I haven't, I'm not, I won't complain as much as I used to. And I'll agree, Roseanne, you have come very far in that. Because here's the reality. This is why. Here's some of the reasons I've come up with. If you've got more, please put them in the chat. The reasons why we complain. One is we're lost. We're lost. You know, in uh, John 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only one his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's John three sixteen. A lot of us complain because we don't know the Lord. We don't have uh, that relationship with him. We don't have that peace that comes from him. Um, we don't understand or completely grasp the concept of that, that he loves you no matter what. And he forgives you for your sins. But you have to turn to him. You have to follow him. You have to ask the Lord for forgiveness for your sins and turn from that life that you have. And so a lot of the reasons we complain is because we don't really see things from his perspective. We don't really see things from God's perspective because we don't have a relationship with God. I'm going to see if I can do this. I don't know if I've ever pasted anything in the chat. But if you don't know, here we go. If you don't know, if you believe in the Lord, you're not sure, please go to that link. And it will tell you if you know for sure. It'll give you some scriptures. Please look at that. And if you are watching this and you have accepted the Lord, please let me know so I can pray for you. Here's another reason why we complain. It's all about us. We are selfish. We only see our mess. We lack compassion. We're envious of other people. Yep, yep. 
we see what someone else has and we're like, well, I wish I had that. It's not fair they have that. Why they've got that? I, I work just as hard as they have and they have that and I don't have that. You know, or as my mom would say, well, I would say, I just don't understand why they're getting married. It's not fair. I mean, my friend, I got five friends getting married right now. Okay, five. <laughs> Something's in the water. I don't know what it is, but five. And like, well, why are they getting married? Why can't you get married? And then my mom said one day, you know, you don't know who they're marrying. Perspective. You need to look at your life from God's perspective. So another reason why is we're distracted by the enemy, right? That's another reason we complain. The enemy tries to distract us, tries to get us off the path that we're going. For those who follow Jesus Christ, he knows, I mean, his the whole purpose you're here is for a relationship with him that glorifies him and a relationship with others to bring people to Christ. So if he can get you off of that, if he can get you to look at the freezer breaking and the internet going down and your avocado turning brown, if he can look at this person's life looks better than yours or, you know, you wish you had more of this or more of that, if he, a thinner waist, whatever, if he can get you on that, then you're not doing the Lord's work. You're focusing on trying to build your kingdom versus God's kingdom. Another reason we complain is we're just unhappy. We're just unhappy. We never thought we would be where we are. I don't know anybody that says, I hope one day I get married and get divorced. I don't know anybody that says, I hope I get married and they die before I do. I hope I have kids and they all don't know Jesus and they get into drugs. I hope I get some horrible disease and I lose my limbs. Are you kidding me? I hope I, are you kidding me? No. We all want the, the, the white fence picking a wife, the, the, the American dream, right? We all want that. And we're in, if maybe in your country, if you're watching another country, you had this ideal dream of what you thought life would turn out. And it hasn't turned out. And you're at a place in your life where you're like, I'm just not happy. Remember, happy is based on circumstance. Joy is based on a relationship with God. You can find joy in the Lord and stop whining and stop complaining when you understand who you are in Christ. God has allowed whatever it is in your life, whatever the results of choices you've made, or God's allowed or other choices that other people have made, God wants you to use it. And I, I get you. I never thought I'd be 58 years old and not married. Are you kidding me? I never thought that I would end up where I am. But at the same time, I would have never imagined that I've traveled to 13 countries and spoken in 49 states. Please, if somebody's watching this in Hawaii, invite me to come speak in Hawaii. I never thought that I would be able to go and do some of the things that I've done and be able to be a part of things, to be on a great team for Labor Day, to be able to write a great book with Pastor Dan Houck. I never thought. See, because my dreams were limited by my brain, but God had bigger dreams for me. He's got bigger dreams for you, too. Would you let him help you dream? Would you let him help you see it from his perspective? Here's another reason. Bored. I like that busy, frustrated. I love that Mary Lois, right? Tangela Craft spell check. I don't know about the spell check. You're probably watching on audio, and uh, it'll, it'll pronounce it the way it wants to pronounce it. Bored, apathetic, lonely. When you're lonely and you're feeling really lost, when you have someone that maybe was in your life and they're not in your life anymore, and you're feeling that aloneness, it often causes us to complain. Or maybe you're just really bored with life and there's nothing to do. I talked to a lady yesterday and she's got some problems with her brain. And as a result of that, there's things she can't do anymore. And she says, Chris, I just have no life at all. And no matter what I suggested, it wasn't good. It wasn't what she wanted and or could do. And she had some limits and those were legitimate concerns. But she was bored and she wanted to live the way she used to and she's not able to physically anymore. That would be another reason. Tired, emotionally, physically tired, emotionally tired. These causes to complain like Elijah. Or you know what? Our walk with God isn't that great. That's probably the biggest issue. The reason why we complain is that we don't really allow the Lord in our lives in such a way that we see things from his perspective. It's only our perspective. So this is the cure, or a cure. Pray and ask God to see this life on earth from his perspective. 
Be intentional and not allow the enemy to distract you, to become apathetic to where you don't feel anymore, you don't have compassion anymore, you don't see people's hurt and not react to it. Be intentional to grow closer to God so you will have zero need to complain and you'll catch yourself. You're like, I'm so, I'm good. That person, I'm okay. The freezer broke. It's okay. God will provide the money to buy a new one, right? You'll catch yourself because you'll be so close to him. You will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will nudge you and remind you to stop complaining. Remember, God allows things in our lives for the number one goal is to draw us closer to him and to share our lives with others. I want to read something to you. I know I'm down to like the last five minutes, but I want to read this to you that was posted on Facebook recently. Now, some of you may have read it. I don't know who wrote it. The author was unknown. It was just reposted. But I want to read it to you because it helped me to stop complaining so much. This lady wrote, Today I complained about the rising cost of fuel, and then I remembered I never, I've, I had n never had to run for missiles. I worried if I needed to stock up on a few staples, and then I realized I've never had to send my children to school with their blood type taped on their backs. I shook my head at the thought of how our young men and women headed overseas and then remembered that for the Ukrainians, war showed up at their doorsteps. Then I decided, I won't sit in my house in suburbia and brood over the downward turn of the stock market while people are literally facing death. Instead, I'm going to pray. I know that God will hear from heaven. He will lean down to listen when I pray. The Bible tells me that. I'm going to pray that whatever evil intends, that God will turn it around for his glory. I'm going to pray that good will overcome evil and that it would happen sooner than later. I'm going to pray that God would hear the cry of every lost soul facing a war they didn't want and come to their rescue. I'm praying for the overwhelming supernatural presence of God Almighty in every corner of the world tonight. She goes, you know, I posted this here to ask you if you would pray with me. Let's fill the throne room with our voices as we call out for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. May God hear our prayers and turn the whole thing around. If he, God, if he can shut the mouths of hungry lions, split an entire sea in half, and raise the dead, he can surely save the Ukraine. One last verse, Philippians 2.14. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Don't you want to shine? Let's start to catch ourselves. Let's draw closer to God so that we will begin to realize when we're starting to complain about things that don't matter, when your order's not right at a restaurant, you know, how do we go about, hey, do you mind if you could fix this? Or, Ugh. you know, we're in line and at the post office and getting angry or on the phone and we waited over an hour for someone to talk to us on the phone about a problem. Remember, we need to let our light shine. Keep things in perspective. Remember what's going on in the Ukraine. I want to give you an opportunity to minister to those in the Ukraine um, Stacy Sample is a good friend of mine, and uh, Stacy's with One Collective. For 20 years, she was with Campus Crusade, and that's how we know each other. Uh, when I started with Crusade, uh, I don't even know how many years ago, over 20 years ago, that's where this ministry got its start. It was a crew ministry, and she was one of my young singles that helped me. She became full-time Campus Crusade. We've been friends ever since. Well, she lives in Budapest, Hungary, and that's where she does her ministry out of. Well, they're getting Ukrainian refugees daily, and she's even allowed her home to be a place for them to stay. And basically, they're staying there on their way somewhere else. And so her ministry has set up a shelter to house some of the Ukrainians as they pass through on their way to other countries, other places to start over. If you want to help and you want to know for sure that every dime that you're giving is going to help this cause, I'm going to put this information in uh, the chat. And please... Um, give if you can. I didn't want to set up my own thing. I, you know, I'm a nonprofit as well, and I appreciate your support. And that link will be in there as well. But let's, uh, if you have anything extra, if you can skip that, you know, 
copy at that specialty shop, if you can skip that extra pair of shoes, if you can skip that extra meal out and so into the work that Stacy is doing, I promise you, you will uh, reap from the blessing and help you in your perspective of being thankful that we still live in a place where we're not being bombed and that we're not fearing our lives every day. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for my friends joining us tonight. Thank you for this fun talk, but this real talk about perspective and God and how we see the things in our life that seem to be such a big deal but are not. But Lord, there are some things that are a big deal. Cancer is a big deal. The death of someone is a big deal. Losing our homes, these are big deals. And it is natural for us to complain. But Lord, help us to, to look at this, to complain in such a way that we still submit ourselves to you, that, Lord, we don't like the cancer. We want the cancer to go away, but we trust you. We don't like that we're single, but, Lord, we trust you. We don't like necessarily where we live, but we trust you. So, Lord, thank you for those watching. And for anyone that watching that they don't know you, Lord, we pray that they would have accepted you and, and to their lives so that we're all together in eternity. In Christ's name, amen. So we'll put these things in the chat. We'll see how, if it all works. There's a bunch of links there. And the first one is our Labor Day Singles Retreat. I want to remind you of this. Oh, please come. I'm going to tell you, it's life changing. Um, also, uh, this weekend, I am doing a Zoom event on Friday night called Single Sense Conversations. Uh, Glory Godson is the host, and I'll be on there with a bunch of other people speaking. That is on my website at thesinglesnetwork.org, as well as Saturday. I'm going to be hosting an intentional relationship Zoom for a ministry in Wales, but the, Wales, yes, Britain, but they've opened it up to everybody, So, and it's a free event, so join us for that. Uh, please go to the intentional website if you would like to order your own copy of the Bible study, uh, and also there's a link for salvation, just in case you uh, forgot the link from earlier, and then the link for the Ukraine. So thanks a lot, everybody. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.